Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Disco Elysium. In the last episode we managed to find, well we managed to find the lady we were looking for whose name has escaped my brain. Ruby. There we go. We found Ruby. We had a conversation with her. She held us hostage but she did get away. I've been warned in a comment that this is a point of no return. I'm not sure if I've gone too far into the point of no return in order to go back but we do have a few side quests left to do. But, um, I think I'm just going to carry on, and we'll see where it goes. I've saved, just in case it doesn't go where I want it to go. <laughs> so let's have a look around in these tunnels. Cooking utensils. She has prepared herself porridge with bananas. What is this? Dark water trails into the distance. There is no way out. The plain red tent stands by dispassionately. It was pitched by practiced hands. She's used to camping out. Let's look inside. The tent looks old, but well maintained. In the darkness of the tent, a rolled up sleeping bag, cooking utensils, some books, and a kerosene lamp. Let's shine our flashlight on the books. Assorted soft covers, mostly pulp horror. A motor carriage lies buried in the snow on one cover. On another, a ghost airship. You also see a collection of radio enthusiast magazines. The lieutenant peeks in over your shoulder. It sift through the magazines. Rega Monthly, Journal of Material Science. More technological digest. One of the magazines doesn't have images on the cover. It's not a magazine. It's a leather notebook. A notebook? Let's take it. You pocket the worn brown leather journal. A trusted friend left behind. We should read this immediately. Like, right now. We can do that. Let's hope this has all the, uh... The case-breaking notes we need. A well-loved journal with a brown leather cover and a brand named... Schneller? Embossed on the back. It seems to have served as a loyal friend a lonely traveller. A thick journal. The cover is worn like someone used to carry it around in their back pocket. Let's examine the cover. It's made of full grain leather. The lower left corner of the back cover sports an embossed brand name. Schneller. Schneller is a stationary brand from Gottwald, beloved among architects and engineers. She's got good taste and must have taken whatever she recorded here seriously. Unwind the strap. The journal falls open. About two thirds of its ruled pages have been filled. Let's study the handwriting. The large cursive of someone who writes quickly and confidently, perhaps too confidently. Many phrases and even paragraphs have been crossed out with tiny corrections scrawled above and in the margins. Let's flip through the pages. It's a mix of logistical notes, diagrams, and personal reflections, all dated. It's good she left in a hurry. We could learn a lot from this. Okay. What kinds of logistics? Hard to tell exactly. It's mostly noted down in code. Looks like contact information, quantities, directions. There could be useful information about local operations in those notes. We have a junior sergeant at my station who's good with codes. I can give this to her after we finish this. What are the diagrams of? Esoteric radio technology. The most recent ones probably pertain to the latitude compressor, sketches, calculations of distance and density. You make out a familiar spiral shape. Anything personal? Short, wry observations of people and places. Probably a way to pass the time on the road. Also, what appears to be attempts to sort through some difficult decisions, there are a few passages with many questions in them. Staff issues, always tough on the leadership. You smell traces of betrayal. How far back do the entries go? The first entry is from August 2nd of last year. It reads simply, I know my position is precarious. All I can do is make myself as useful as I can while looking for a way out. Remember, no one is indispensable. What did she write the day Lele died? Nothing on March 4th. 
March 5th, though. Well, that's bound to come back and bite me in the ass. I'm bad at this. Loyal to a fault. Except. But that's another matter entirely. You have no idea what she means. These are personal notes. Don't expect to understand all of it. Damn. Anything about La Puta Madre? That name isn't mentioned as far as you can tell. Small wonder. Would you talk about La Puta Madre in your journal? You do see an M though. La Puta Madre? M is mentioned on March 9th and March 15th. Let's read the entry from March 9th. Great. M's peon is coming to town, no doubt to investigate the lynching. But also, I feel it in my gut to finally put a bullet in my head while I'm napping in my lorry or on a smoke break. Well, I won't stick around just to twist my own neck by constantly looking over my shoulder. Then again, isn't that what I've been doing ever since I got the call? Were you supposed to find her, even apart from the investigation then? On M's request? No, you wouldn't do something like this. This must be a mistake. This is a coincidence. I would never kill people for a mob boss. The thought steadies your nerves. The journal stops shaking in your hand. Let's read the entry from March 12th. Been holed up here for three days now. I'm used to being alone and all, but I don't know when I'll be able to leave, or if I'll be ratted out. They will rat me out, of course. I've made it a point to believe in the best in people, the boys, for example. But experience tells me. Did M feel truly betrayed by me? I was feeling threatened. He'd have to know if he threatened people, they'd take measures to protect themselves. Even I know that. Economic measures, first of all. Gotta make a living, right? I can still hear his voice in the receiver. Taste the plastic. The entry ends abruptly. What's the most recent entry? Include with a journal. The most recent entry is from today. It reads, Even when I leave here, if I leave here alive, what's my next move? Staging a lynching is a crime, even if I'm not accused of murder on top of that. Forever on the run. Not really my idea of the open road. Man, I was really looking forward to winning. Huh. It looks like she might have been framed. The lieutenant taps on the page. That would be a first, or a fourth. But who's counting, he thinks. Very rarely does anyone actually get framed. If she didn't do it, then maybe it's good we didn't catch her. Kim, am I really a La Puta Madre agent? Let's go with that one. <laughs> ah, no, I don't think you are. Ask someone in your precinct if you want to be sure. Seems like a good idea. He truly does not believe you are. Perhaps he shouldn't be so trusting. His trust is well placed. You aren't. You can feel it. If she didn't do it, then maybe it's good that we didn't catch her. I wouldn't go so far as to say that. We have other reasons to arrest her. He frowns. Besides, I'm not sure her life as a fugitive is going to be much better than with us. Especially if she has problems with the madre. And who do you think killed the Merc? Could have been Titus. Then again... No one heard the shot. Maybe there's a hardy boy we've yet to meet who acted as his accomplice. Either way, we need to keep an eye on him. I don't think it was Titus. I don't see why Titus, what he would achieve by doing this. I, st I feel there's an somebody in play here that we don't know about. Like, she mentioned another mercenary that hasn't come up this whole time. Which is very suspicious. One thing is for certain. We have business back in the whirling in rags. Questions to ask. Let's be careful though. The tip she gave us about the tribunal was disturbing. Was that code to go back to the whirling? Hmm. I'm gonna save again. <laughs> oh, I'm part like if this is like the tribunal's gonna happen because I hit a flag. I'm very up this can be very upsetting. There is we still haven't got to the island. There was a point where it was like, oh god, all my... Ah, no. Determine where the shot came from. Check the island for bullet traces. How do I get to the island? I don't know how. Unless that comes up as something after we've done whatever we're supposed to be doing in the world. 
It's possible. Why am I going up the stairs? I can leave through the door down here. It's considerably safer. <laughs> okay, well, we can unequip the flashlight, I feel. We haven't opened the ice cream box, but I don't know what I can actually do to try and make that happen anymore. Like, I can't increase my stats anymore without just dumping loads of points. I do have, like, points I can scale up. I think I have lots of points I can scale up. Oh, my God. Oh, dear. Apparently, I've just been ignoring this, huh? Uh, rhetoric for the cargo container door, which I still want to open, but I haven't managed to do it yet. Electric doorbell. Tommy home. I'm not sure there's anything that I actually feel that we need to do. The warded door. The barbell. The central furnace. That was something that, um, can I, do I have anything that increases my physical instrument? I kind of want to look at the central furnace. Let's, let's see if we can... Because that's related to the commercial area, and I am genuinely intrigued about the commercial area. It's one of the first quests I picked up, and I, I never came to a conclusion, and I don't particularly want to not have a conclusion. Let's go... Oh, can't fast travel from here. Hang on. Wait, go to the church? Which is up here, right? Yeah, here we are. We also haven't helped start the nightclub, but in order to do that, we need to find the ice cream maker. We need to open it. There's so many things that are all just very annoying. Oh. Can I just not fast travel? Uh, that's a bit worrying, isn't it? That's a bit worrying. Why can't I fast travel? Is there something happening in cent Central Martinez that uh, is stopping me from fast traveling? That's usually what not being able to fast travel means. Let's go into the center of the fishing village and... No, still can't fast travel. Okay, I think I think we may be past the point of no return, which is slightly sad. We'll see. At least I've still got my uh, my frit bag. That's the most important part of this entire thing. I'll check this trap just in case the. Uh... The trap is full of locusts. But they seem weak and unhealthy. A few lie on their backs with their legs twitching. Still, no phasmid. Damn. Poor things. I wonder if that boy has showed up again. I don't know. I don't know what was going on with, with the boy. Why it didn't show up. Not a horrible feeling. I'm going to need my gun. I'm going to quick save. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I'm, something horrible is going to happen. I can feel it. Where is the vendor? Stop. Now. It is time. Uh, that sounds ominous. It is. What am I supposed to do? Be prepared. Make sure you have your pepper box in your hand. Okay, that's weird. Why did Inland Empire have the exact same thought that I did? Your fingers <laughs> reflexively reach for the Villiers 9mm pistol in your pocket. I'm not sure I feel ready for what lies ahead. Then you'd better get ready. Whatever happens, I've got your back. Okay, well, we know what's happening here. We are equipping as many pieces of the armor as possible. I'm already wearing the... I don't I only have the gloves and the chest piece, which I'm already wearing. Well, poop. Uh... <laughs> oh, no. Wait, I gotta get the horrific necktie. If I'm going down, I'm going down with the horrific necktie around my neck. Sweet. Uh, what hell? Do we have a helmet that might help? I don't know. I don't think so. We don't really have that many hats. One of the few things that we kind of... I mean, I could wear this. Seems a bit silly. Wear the popo. Yeah. What glasses? What do these glasses do? These give us a Savoy Fair. They don't give us visual calculus. I don't think that's going to be a problem. Where's my gun? Gun. I think I'm right-handed. I'm not entirely sure. Get the bag out of my hand just in case. Holding the gun feels natural and satisfying. It's like an extension of your arm. The polished wooden handle almost fusing into your palm. I think my hand recognizes it. It reminds you of the day you first held it with fear and respect. Hoping you don't have to use it in vain. 
The sun was out in Jamrock. It was so long ago. Sheathe your sidearm, officer. A serious law official, cop by the book, should know to only unholster their service weapon when using it is unavoidable. I don't think I have much of a choice, so I'm going to keep it in my hands. I'm all out of shit to give, loincloth. Welcome to the fucking reckoning. There's a feverish gleam in his eyes. Put your damn gun down. People are gonna get hurt. We need to talk this through. All right? Who's that guy? I only say who's this guy because he has a long rifle. Shut up. You're not gonna talk yourself out of this, loincloth shit fuck. Well, Kim, what's going on here? Shh. The lieutenant raises his left hand. This is a misunderstanding. Nothing irreversible has happened yet. You can just return to your unit and forget all about this. The Kipt is merciful, willing to spare us if we just forget about our murdered and humiliated commander. I think we should just kill everyone, Corti. Her tone is frighteningly emotionless. You are all drunk. Come to your senses. You won't gun down seven people in the middle of the street? This isn't a frontier town or a jungle outpost? Easy, Lizzie. Let me handle it. I know guys like this. I'm sure we can come to a peaceful agreement. Ain't that right, fellas? He is facing overwhelmingly superior firepower. And he knows it. Peaceful. It sounds like the armored figure is weeping. Who are you? Rud Hoen Cloen? Fuck, she was right. That must be the third mercenary. The lieutenant is genuinely worried for his life. You should consult him before getting in there. That big one is the mercenary at the gates. The scab leader. Uh, we're out of time. This is... Yeah, what do we do? Let's go with that. What do we do? My plan is not to get killed, but we have to intervene. Okay. We're out of time. The mercenary tribunal. The big ones? The mercenary at the gate? If this turns into a firefight, we should take him out first. He's wearing ceramic armor. You know that, right, Kim? A sound strategy. He's the leader. Oh, well. Let's go. Stop. This is the police. Let's get between them. This is the worst possible place to be. <laughs> Get lost, comedian. You cops had your chance. Now it's fucking time for some justice. He licks his lips, waving his gun at the crowd. Losing his balance for a moment, he staggers backward. I think he's calmed down a bit. Big fuck! Is the only word you can make out. It doesn't sound calm. I can see you're drunk. One wrong move and I'm taking you out. Uh, let's go with easy now. No one needs to die here today. Oh, people are gonna die today. We're not leaving it like this. These tribals hung him up for everyone to see. Are we allowed to say what actually happened? No one is going to kill anyone. Let's just put the guns down and talk like civilized human beings. With a wordless gurgle. The killer loads his long rifle. Suspicious. The leader gives a small nod to the helmeted man. Suddenly, the grip of your sidearm feels comforting and warm in your hand. Feels like it's saying, do it. Uh-oh. No, wait. It's good you have that gun. It really is. Just soften him up first. Present an argument. Oh, no. I mean, just shooting a man isn't really my style. Even if it comes to a fight, it's always a good idea to drag it out first. Get under his skin. Peace. Always peace. It has worked thus far. Start with the first idea you have, then move down from that. Please. Okay. So we can either do suggestion, rhetoric, hand-eye coordination, just shoot him dead. Okay. Um... Let's... I'm going to go straight with the highest chance we have, which is suggestion. Talk about the hangman. Plus two. His name is Ellis 
Cordon hair. He was busted, and he had blue eyes. Look at that. Please don't fail. Dangerous. Ask about him first. You don't want personal facts about his dead friend coming out of your mouth. He has to start it. I knew you weren't a goddamn scab leader. Yeah, I don't fucking act so well. Laylee had a hard on for making faces for you natives. Fucking food aid shit. That shit is done now. Trigger time. Who are you, Corty? Sergeant Major Raoul Cortiner. Reporting in to burn this fucking mud hut to the ground. He points at the whirling in rags. Click, click, click. The realization comes to you like a picture puzzle coming together. His name is Raoul Cortenar. The dead man's name is Elise Cortenar. He's brothers with the deceased. Oh. Oh, that might explain why he's so pissed off. No. Probably foster brothers. Elise was put into a foster home, remember? Oh, of course. For killing, maiming, and humiliating our commanding officer, you're all sentenced to death by lead. His parents left him in a fucking leaf compactor. <laughs> Not sure that would actually help. Uh, Courtner, I know that name. He sways from left to right, inspecting you. Raoul and Ellis Cortner. Look at him in the eye. I'm sorry about your brother, Raoul. He wasn't my fucking brother. We just grew up on the same farm and got beat into place by the same sick fuck. And then went to the same military academy, the same unit, and the same war. Same fucking mud hut town, too. He looks around and wipes his face with his armored glove. Okay, good. His parents left him in a fucking leaf compactor. Who? Laylee? Yeah, when he was small, just an infant. We researched him. We contacted the ICP and looked at his birth records. That was in there. And other things. They fucking put Laylee in a leaf compactor. And now these cunts finished the job. He waves at the gang huddled by the doors. It's a mind fuck, Corty. He wasn't put in a leaf compactor. They're making it up to fuck with us. Major, permission to. Open fire. We can't have that. Interfere now. Um, uh, uh-oh. Listen, you're Lele. Everyone says things about him. He was a good talker? Uh, that doesn't sound like he's gonna work. He had blue eyes, didn't he? That seems good. Your brother. Baby blue, yeah. Like someone fucked up and put a baby's eyes on a grown man. He smiles, pulling his face in a strange way. It was creepy, but bitches, bitches like that shit, I guess. Or, I don't know what bitches like. I just know how to mow down cloths. And let's say he was a good talker. What do you mean, talker? We've heard testimony. People say he was charismatic, a nice guy to be around. Thanks, Kim. Yeah, he liked to chat up the natives. Share leaflets, squeeze a bit of kid tass here and there. Great fucking idea that turned out to be. He points towards the yard. If Laylee was here, he would spare the lot of you. Maybe shoot one for sure. But me, I'm not a big fan of public affairs, Clay Monkey. I'll gun every one of you down for what you did. This doesn't appear to be going the direction I want it to be going. Ready to open fire, Major. At your command. Your brother did not deserve to go out like that. I promise, I will find his killer. Find his killer? Cop, his killer stands right there, shitting his pants, and you're standing in the way, protecting them. I think I'm protecting everyone who isn't the killer. Just saying. I know what this tactic is, Silo Sam. You're gonna die for them. Right here. Please don't get shot. Big talk, but that leaf compactor won't leave his mind anytime soon. It's a small thing, but it got him off center. Okay. Okay. Uh, should we try the rhetoric? 83%? Cross your fingers. All right. Here we go. This is an illegal tribunal. Krenner would never sanction this. Who's the commanding officer? Take your pick. 
Really? None of this looks like it's going to do anything but piss him off. <laughs> Just to be clear, are you officially in charge of this unit after the death of your colonel? Uh, Cronel does not give you the right to conduct a tribunal. You were called Downwell once. What happened? Gulp and say nothing. Uh, let's let's go with the top option. Officially in charge of this unit after the death of your colonel. Me? I fucking told you. I'm a Cronel Major with 15 years of live combat experience. When my colonel gets hanged by clay monkeys, I lead the platoon on a retaliation strike. So you are the highest ranking of the three of you? Nah, I just have the biggest gun. He raps on his armored barrel-like chest. Technically, the other man has the biggest gun. <laughs> but we're beyond that now. Oh, God. Just be like, that man over there's gun's bigger than yours. I... <laughs> That's how you get shot. <laughs> okay. Um. Hold on, what's the highest rank in Cronel? Over there. King Reaper. He says without irony. Well, as the leader of this group, reconsider your actions. This does not need to end in bloodshed. You're right. But you see, I want it to end in bloodshed. Ah. Well, you see. Okay, it's not much. But he's thinking about something else. And his hand is off the gun. This did something. Easy now. Tell them these men didn't do it. There's a peaceful way out. Okay, so we have a 42% chance to shoot him. But that's because we figured out the armor, got him talking, and he's thinking of a leaf compactor, which, you know. But I would like to try and go through some of these. Brought back up, pointed the masked man. I'm out of town. Oh yeah, that's rude. Rude, the killer, Owen Cloven. He doesn't talk much. Oh no, he seemed like he was talking quite a bit earlier. All of you cunts inside out. The killer. The gunner. The raddest. The killer. He points to the figure clad entirely in ceramic plate. What do you think he does? Tends to the stables? No. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I think he kills. Smart loincloth. He fucks natives up. Soldier of the apocalypse style. Easy. Easy now. Okay, no, still 42%. Listen, they didn't do it. Let's go with your old drunk. Look at yourselves. Yes. So what? <laughs> Al Ghul is the trick of the desert pygmies. No, not the desert pygmies. God damn, that was Measurehead. That was such a long time ago. Your judgment is impaired. You'll regret this. Nah, I'm clear as day. Fucking government ordained super soldier. Enough already. What is this? We didn't come here to fucking chat! Interrupt me again and I will execute you on the spot, Lance Corporal. The outburst is accompanied by yellowish saliva around his mouth. Ooh, got them arguing. 58% chance. Uh, where is Khaleesi? She can explain this. Let's go with that option. Who the fuck is that? Glacier, the woman upstairs. Where is she? She left! God, what the hell are you doing here? What am I doing? My fucking establishment is under fire! You know how much windows cost? <laughs> what do you mean she left? She left! Her room's cleaned out! Right before these assholes showed up! Oh, that's not a good look. We should have arrested her. The lieutenant whispers, his eyes still on the armed mercenaries. You can feel how upset he is with himself. Just for a second. Then the fear takes over, and he's back in the moment. Hey, Bushman! Your little cunt isn't gonna help you out of this one! She's gone. Forget about it now. Concentrate on this. For God's sake, tell him the Hardys didn't do it. Present a case. Okay, well listen. They didn't do it. Yeah? Who did that? It was me. No, um... It was someone else, someone who's not here now. How fucking convenient. Gives you a drunken stare and puts his hand on the gun. He was shot from a great distance. A sniper did it. A lot of people could have gotten to that roof like Garth, the cafeteria manager. 
Actually, they are here, pointed the enemy. It was one of you. No, let's go with this. The shot came from a great distance. A sniper did it. Do you think I'm fucking stupid, cop? What if I just shot one of your pals here, right now, huh? How about the kid? Tell me, it's a magic fucking sniper one more time. Listen, please. This cop and this drumhead cop marshal won't decide who- A 92% chance to pass a logic check? Think, think, why doesn't he believe me? Please pass. The Hardy Boys confessed to hanging him, all together. Titus said we took him out back and hanged him. He said it loud, in a public place. Hmm. Listen, he was shot. He wasn't hanged. Listen to me. You're lying. DePaul heard it. He doesn't move the weapon. You heard wrong. She and these men have been helping us find the shooter. The hanging was only a cover-up. Listen. Fucking liars. Oh my god. That made me jump. He pulls the trigger. A plume of smoke erupts from the muzzle of his gun. The young woman stands and looks behind her. The shot has flown over her head, crashing a small pane of the glass window behind her. I missed. The man looks at his revolver, smiles. I know what I heard, Corti. They said they killed him. They said it was a good way to end a Sunday night. That doesn't sound good. You need to change the topic now, or there will be another shot. Okay. Uh, the Wild Pines rep does not approve of this? You think I care what that company cunt thinks? <laughs> Uh, Wild Pines is not going to forgive you for massacring a bunch of innocent people. Uh, we're working together. She knew you're out of control, she told me. Uh, let's go with this one. Bunch of innocent people. The man stares at you with bloodshot eyes, a bull ready to charge. He's not listening, but looking for an opening. Uh-oh. We're working together. She knew you're out of control, she told me. She's gone, you stupid fuck. Sailed off five minutes ago. She doesn't give a shit about you, Silos. Stay cool! Don't do anything stupid! Titus shouts to his men in the background. The company bitch is gone. The lady's cunt is gone. The lady's gone. Fuck are we still doing in this shithole? He looks around. Tired, suddenly. Sad, even. Guys, I, um... Uh, I just get in the way. I don't even have a gun! <laughs> Bloody hell, sh Shanky. Hold your ground. Any more of you run, I'll shoot you myself. We're doing this together. They're huddled close in a formation. Still, the rest will stay. Even if it means dying here with him. Okay, so now we're down to the final choice. Do I try and shoot him? Or do I stand quietly and hope nothing bad happens? Oh my god, what a horrible choice. I don't want to shoot him. I feel like shooting him is just going to make these two open fire. I'm going to stand here quietly and hope nothing bad happens. I wish I could quick save. <laughs> I don't think I can. No. <laughs> okay, well, this is the choice I shall make. What's the matter, loincloth? Mouthful of dick. Think I'm gonna fucking spare you? Shit, this is it. Tell him anything. Tell him you have more information. Kill me and you'll never find out who killed your colonel. I've been withholding information. Go ahead then, kill me. I wanna die. God damn it, I did my best. I just need more time to solve the murder. Me and Kim are gonna fucking murder you. <laughs> let's go with the top option. I've been withholding information. I don't actually have any information, but let's bluff. Brute. Kill him. Uh oh. The porcelain man raises his rifle and takes aim at you. His hands are steady, and the long barrel of the rifle sways slowly. Can I just point out, everyone just ran away. Thanks, guys. <sighs> okay. Kim? Where is Kim? Blink, think, or reaction speed. Dodge the shot, 17%. Let's see if we can blink and think. You steer down the barrel of the gun. You see Rude's mask behind it, his eyes in the slit of the helmet, like a camera lens, focusing on you. 
God, you're so frail. Too frail to think further. Time is running out. Uh-oh, Kim. Where is Kim? From the corner of your eye, you see the lieutenant raise his pistol and aim it at Rude. I think I'm about to get shot. Dodge the shot. A low shot rings. You feel a tapping like rain on your chest plate. Heavy drops of rain. Then the sound of dice rolling as the cuirass distributes the shot evenly from plate to plate. My god, the ceramic armor just took the shot? Good lord. You got hit. The armor took most of it, but still your ribcage burns. Feels like blood is slowly seeping into your lungs. I sure hope he doesn't decide to shoot me in the head or legs, because, uh... I am missing those pieces of armor. Can I put my hand in front of my face? God, please. The lieutenant says quietly, without trembling. He aims, face pale. Two shots ring at once. Ah! One from the lieutenant's pistol, and the other from the balls. It's aimed at the lieutenant, but it misses. You hear a scream behind you. Kim, did he hit the rifleman? Blood gushes from the helmet's eye sockets as Rude staggers back, disoriented. The sounds coming from his helmet are not human. An unbelievable shot from the lieutenant. Who screamed? Glenn, dying in a puddle of blood behind you. His mangled torso has two gunshot wounds. Blood gushes out of them like red geezers. I think I'm supposed to be sad that Glenn died, but I didn't really know Glenn, so I don't really care. <laughs> That's probably... That's probably not the correct emotional response to this situation, but ah, it's fine. Oh God, watch out. Wait, what? You see two cold eyes looking at you through all the smoke and panic and a pistol raised aiming at your chest point blank. Then the man squeezes the trigger. Look him in the eye. I could try and evade it, but 3%. I don't think it's going to happen. Look him in the eye. A look of happiness. His eyes seem unnaturally bright, shining like stars. Something in the fear must distort him somehow. He is evil. And the end. Let's roll the dice. Ow. You can't. There is no time. Something inside your pelvis explodes. Your entire lower body is on fire and your legs can't support you. You fall down like a rag doll. The pain is too immense to scream. It pushes the air out of your lungs. Everything goes dark. A distant blur as you recede into it. Let's try to open our eyes. What do I see? You're bleeding out. Nothing. Darkness, blurring lights of pain. Out of it, a silhouette emerges, crouching over you. A familiar voice, filled with urgency and fear. Uh, it's dark, I can't see anything. Kim, I lied about not remembering who I am. I made it up, I remember everything. Wait, really? Uh, there's a white shadow that smells like apricots. It's always there. Stay with me. You feel burning hot tears streaming from your eyes. I can't forget it, even when I drank so much. It said I have a vast soul. Do I have a vast soul? You would have started loving me again, but I called her, and now she won't. Let's go with this. I can't forget it, even though when I drank so much. Yes, keep talking. You hear me? Stay awake. But you can't. It's so hard. Your eyelids grow heavy, and the sounds ever more distant, and a cold comes over you. The lieutenant, too, is somewhere far away, almost gone, when suddenly... You sense something behind him. A shadow towering. Someone stands there, raising his pistol at him. The lieutenant does not see it. He's pushing down on your wound with both hands. Okay, authority five, very hard. The lieutenant trusts you, and Kim truly trusts you. No, you say, and hand out your firearm to him. Your hand trembles, and your eyes are full of fear. All it takes. There is no room for hesitation. The lieutenant moves like a spring unloaded. He grabs the gun from your bloody hand 
and fires behind him. You hear a roar of pain, a death scream. The sound disappears like someone pressed stop on the tape. The hulking figure too is gone, and so is Kim, and the whole world. It's fall into total darkness. This is death. One more door, baby. One more door. No, let me back into the fight. The fight? There is no fight. The fight is over. It was lost a thousand years ago. You have laid here forever. Keep falling. Take the door. He's not taking it. His body is not taking it. Oh God, no. He's not disintegrating. He's swelling up instead. Over the hours. Hurting. Moaning in his sleep. And rotting. And being disinfected. And smelling of drugs and feeling saliva in his mouth, drifting in painkillers, thrashing in his wound sleep. He can't go, not before the case is solved. Exactly, I need to know who did it. Hours turn to days. Soon we will get up again and go through it again, again. Finally, we know what the infernal engine was outside. The clarion call. The engine of a caprice Kinema. No, it was him. He is the infernal engine. Can't you see? He never stops. He only gets wild. You see the lieutenant's familiar shape in the orange jacket. It turns double, then triple, from the pain. Him? Sunrise, Parabellum. The lieutenant says he's in the middle of a freshly cleaned room, with the fan above his head like a halo. His face is covered in bruises. What happened? What happened? We tried to take the diplomatic route and hoped they wouldn't attack first. They did. The Major gave the command. What happened then? As retaliation, the rifleman tried shooting you. He hit the cuirass. I heard it go off. I was looking for a clear line of sight to him. I shot and wounded him, while Glenn took a bullet in the spine. It was meant for me. He did not survive. As a pause. This is not the first person to die in his place. He goes on. Titus, Fat Angus, and Theo charged. Angus and Theo died before they made it to intensive care. Titus died in the hospital. Yesterday. Alain and the young musician, I forget his name. They are all that's left. Oh my god. Titus is dead? Yes. Nod. You were bleeding out. I think you said something about your wife. And you warned me. I was able to disarm the Major before he got a jump on me. Thank you. Although... I was not able to kill him, as I should have. Cranel took him. A stray bullet killed the pole, though. And that's what happened. Hmm... And the Major? He's in a private hospital across the river. Cranel claimed him from the local butcher shop where Titus died. Turns out he's insured. What a surprise. We won't get to him anymore. The good news is he's not coming here either. I did some damage. Titus is dead? Yes. He pulls on his cigarette intently. But well, you only smoked once a day. This is the one. It's coming in early today. How many casualties on the Union side total? Four. Glenn, Theo, Angus, the fat one. He took a lot of bullets. And Titus. And that's... All. <laughs> Not that bad, all things considered. Uh... I don't see how it could have gone any better. Let's face it, officer. It could have gone a little better. You could have been armed. It was my mistake too. I should have attacked. 
Oh, I suppose he's just saying you should have shot first. But what's done is done. The violence is cold enough. The Hornets did not get into the beehive. The worst scenario has not materialized yet. And we are still alive, both of us. The most important part. He did not expect you both to survive once you stepped between those two armies. Ouch. It's not ouch time yet. You just got the Druamine pill an hour ago. Wait until it wears off. Oh. <laughs> Druamine. Then it's not that bad. Neither surgical nor organ damage bad, but still under the counter bad. The room? It's clean. Mr. Gart cleaned it. It took him an entire day. How long have I been out? Two days, in and out. You've been up enough to take Druamine and curse and drink water. What did you say? Sunrise? Sunrise Parabellum. Sunrise, prepare for war. It's an old revolutionary thing. My gun? Engraved on it? Cops like it. Bit war today? The gates of the harbor are boarded up. The streets are a little more empty. Apocalyptic violence is yet to erupt, I am relieved to say. He looks out the window. I think we may have held it off for now. Barely. Good. Yes, we have also completely failed, but that's okay. <laughs> Thanks, Kim. I, th I, thought, I thought it went well, but apparently I've just completely buggered this up. How bad am I hurt? Reasonably bad. You were shot in the left quadriceps. That's your thigh. It appears no major arteries were nicked. The bullet was removed and a bacterial infection treated with mercurochrome. The bruising in your shoulder is negligible. The armor took the brunt of the fire. I walk? We will see. If it's possible, then by pure willpower alone, you are going to have to become a psycho locomotor. What is a psycho locomotor? What is that? Good. You'll need to be. Whatever that is. Right. Has anyone from my station been to see me? No. A man and a woman sit in the front seat of an armored motor carriage. The woman is driving. The man lights a cigarette. Jean Vitmer is his name. The asphalt vanishes under the wheels of the machine. Ahead, harbor cranes rise to the sky. Back to that shithole, he says. Isn't that strange? I called your station after the fight. The injury was logged in. They told me they've sent officers to join you on the site. Okay. I'm sure they are worried about you. No. They would be here if they were truly worried. If they were so worried about me. Where are they? I don't know. That's between you and them, he thinks. If not at my station, then who treated me? I did. I didn't know you could do that. It's part of a detective's task chain. You can do it too. Wait. Can you? You're pretty sure you can't. <laughs> Are you hurt? Not very. I have a concussion from the Major beating me with the butt of his gun. I try to not move too much. Things would be worse if you didn't warn me. Thank you. I did not see him coming. Stupid of me. Okay, let's get up. Easy now. The lieutenant turns double again before your eyes, an orange hue of pain. Your balance is way off. You feel like you're about to fall over on that thing. How are you? My disco days are done. Your disco days should have been done quite a while back, Lieutenant Ephrater. What happens now, Kim? I honestly don't know. Good, because I totally do. Do you? Because we can't talk to Everhart. The harbour is in lockdown. Everyone in there is outside our grasp now. And Joyce has left too. Joyce is gone? Yes, she left yesterday morning. To meet the board of wild pines. Oh, that is what I've heard. There's a pin somewhere in the machine that keeps Connell from sending in a death squad. He looks out the window. Maybe it's her. Maybe she kept her hand. Either way, Ruby's gone. And Classio too. We really should have arrested her, you know? Who did it then, Kim? Who killed the hangman? I don't know. I think the theory you presented, it's someone else outside our circle of suspects, was right. It better be. Everyone within the circle is either dead or gone. 
Honestly, I think our investigation has not produced a single credible suspect. This is because I'm a Laputa Madre peon, isn't it? The fucking Maybells, Kim. The flowers? Oh god. What? They were on the roof. I did not I did not catch them, fucking butterfingers. Every piece of garbage in the city is not connected to the case. You don't have to catch everything. Is there a place where the Maybells are though? He's wrong. No, Kim. Every piece of garbage in the city is connected okay. to the case. The goddamn footprints? Yes. God cursed the footprints. Not solving the case for us. Au diable. <laughs> There's still a 28% possibility the shot came from a distance. We should go upstairs. Rethink the ballistics in situ. I agree with this. What else? See? There's that. You can do ballistics. There are all these old bunkers and weapon caches. Revolutionary era. We could find thousands more if we wanted. All of Revachol is full of them. But they seemed so mysterious. I can't believe they're fucking useless. No need to be melodramatic. Ah, <sighs> it's simple. We have to locate communism. Communism killed him. I'm afraid we may not be able to locate communism, detective, on account of it being dead. Okay. A nod. This is because I'm a Laputa Madre peon, isn't it? Don't be narcissistic. Half the cops in Revachol West are his peonies. Even if you are, it is not a decisive factor in this case. That does make some sense. You know what I think about? Solving crimes. He arches his brow. The ceiling fan patiently spins overhead. I think it's super easy. Really? Because to me, it seems solving crimes is... Hard. <laughs> he sounds surprisingly weary. You're not ready to give up, are you? No. Are you ready to limp? I'm ready. Good. Where do you want to limp to? I want to go to the island. The know, lieutenant though. did mention doing more ballistics. We should check Mrs. Katazine Alagine room upstairs. I can't say her bloody name. Why not? He extinguishes the cigarettes on the sole of his boot. Another look at the window, perhaps? The one he was shot through. I don't know. I can't think of anything better. Okay, and with that, this episode has gone on about twice as long as I expected, so I'm gonna end it here. I don't know how much more of the game is left. We seem to be coming to a, like a conclusion, but we still don't know who did the killing, and I'm excited to find out. So thank you all very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, let me know what you think. Your comments are greatly appreciated. If you want to help me make these videos and keep the channel going. Please become a YouTube member or donate on coffee or various other things. It really does mean the world. And as always, I'll see you next time.